This is a lecture from Open Tuition. To benefit from the lecture, you should download the free lecture notes from OpenTuition.com. And finally, in this chapter, we've got private residence relief. So, if you have a domestic residence in the UK and you live in it the whole time, then you will get full relief. You will pay no capital gains tax when you sell it. Now, this covers also the grounds of up to half a hectare of land. So you live there throughout the entire period of ownership, then you will pay no tax on the sale of your residence. However, if you've only lived there for part of the time, then you will pay tax on a proportion of it. So we will have a pro forma, um, um, a formula, a rule, Whatever the gain is, and remember the bigger figure is on the bottom, so, <coughs> excuse me, that's the whole period of ownership, and on the top is the actual period of ownership. Now, there are some you were actually there. However, the revenue have come up with what's known as deemed periods of occupation. Okay, deemed periods of occupation. More rules. So, the last nine months is always deemed as being a period of occupation. Any period when an individual is required to live and work abroad. Any period up to four years during which the individual is required to live elsewhere in the UK because of their job and up to three years for any reason. Now, B and D, the, 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 those must be proceeded and followed by periods of actual occupation. But for B and C, which are the two employment ones, you don't have to come back to the house in between. Now, you'll never have to determine the beginning and an end of whether they came back. It, it, the, everything will be um, explained in a way that it's obvious. You're not going to have to make any huge decisions as to whether or not they came back and did they come back for one day or um, they came back at midnight and left at six. Is that period of it? None of that. It will be much more straightforward um, than that. So what you do when there is a period of absence is you work out the gain on the property. Guess what we're looking for? Proceeds minus cost equals gain. You work out the total period of ownership. Now that's normally done in months. Okay, normally done in months. And then you work out the periods of deemed and actual occupation. Okay, and then you work out the exemption because this exempts it from tax and then you consider letting relief if that is appropriate. So we're going to look at two examples. Example number 11, and then we're going to look at letting relief and do example number 12. So David bought a house on the 1st of April 1997. That's the original cost. He's, he lived in it until June 1997. He worked abroad for two years and then moved back to the house on his return on the 1st of July 1999. He lived in the house until December 2005 before leaving to live and work elsewhere in the UK. David did not return to the house and the house was sold on the 30th of June 2022 for 150,000 proceeds. What is the gain arising? Okay, first thing we need to do, that's when he bought it and that's when he sold it. 1st of April 97 to the 30th of June 22. Always work in months. Now, I'm going to tell you how many months that is. I want you to make sure you understand how I got to that figure because we can't sit here and, and kind of count it all out. It is 303 months. So now might be a good time to pause the 
recording and the lecture and just have a look at making sure you understand how that's worked out and that you agree that it's 303 months. Don't just take my word for it. All right, because it's important. So in the example, always do, this is your answer. Set out your pro forma first. Proceeds, less cost equals gain. You can go down to there. Then you write in less PRR relief, chargeable gain. That's your main working. This is how you set out your working for this. Actual or deemed months of occupation and absent months. We worked out that this was 303 months in total. Now, what I want you to do is I want you to work out, firstly, the total. So that's the first thing you do. The second thing is to copy the question out with the dates. So the question said he bought it on the 1st of April 97 and he lived there until the end of June. Okay, He was actually there for three months. So the 1st of July until the 1st of July 1997, he was working abroad. So write the dates out. Then he was there actually. And then from that date till the end, you need to work that out how many months that is. These dates, if you copy them carefully, you'll get half a mark for copying them carefully. So do it properly. Okay, this is the rule. Will you please write in the rule that you have applied? So it's either actual or it's a deemed one working overseas four years in the, whatever he's doing, whatever's happening, the rule that you've applied. Because that also is going to get you marks. Now, those two are very important. That, so that's number two, you've copied the question. Three, you've done the rules. Now, this bit here is where students fall down because counting causes them issues. Okay, not quite sure why. If you've worked out the total of 303 and when you do what's in this little box and you put that and it doesn't come to 303, you're allowed two minutes, two minutes to redo the maths and work out no more than that. I have seen students waste 15 minutes trying to get those numbers to add up to the total. And all you're getting is an extra half a mark. This exam is about getting more than 50 marks by putting the rules down, applying the rules, not for the answers necessarily. Do you've written down the dates, you've written down the rules, you've written down some numbers. If they don't quite agree, use the numbers that you've you they've written down in the box, the three, the twenty-four, the seventy-eight, and do the answer. Because by doing one, two, three, oh, okay, and four, you're gonna get two, three marks for this. There is always a lot of marks for this simply because it trips students up. Also, if this PRR, this house, comes in a list of other items that need to be completed. So you've got paintings, antiques, buildings, and one of these. Do it last. Don't do it first. And again, please don't waste time making those reconciliations because you will only get maybe another half a mark and you've wasted 15 minutes doing that. You should be getting 1.8 marks a minute. If you've wasted 15 minutes on that, you should be getting 15, at least 15 marks, not an extra half. So please bear that in mind. Exam technique. So we worked out that the first three months he was actually there. Then he worked to work overseas. That's a deemed occupation. That's allowed. Then he moved in. Actual. Now, then he worked up to four years 
in the UK up to four years. So that's 48 plus nine. 48 plus nine. So that's this figure here, which means that 141 of those months, that's a balancing figure. Those he must pay tax on. So 162 divided by the total. So this is the deemed and actual occupation divided by the total times the gain will give us the PRR 74851. That goes in there, giving us a gain, which then goes into the list um, with all the other gains as and when. Now, they can ask this as multiple choice question, but it could be a lot simpler, but it can come up as a big capital gains question. There have been times when a whole 11, uh, 10 marker has been a list of capital gains items that need to be worked out. Now, sometimes people use part of their residence for business purposes, exclusively for business purposes. Um, if that's the case, you don't get relief for that part of the house. And they'll normally tell you there are six rooms in the house. One of them is used exclusively for business purposes. This, the same with all of the other reliefs that we've looked at. The house must be for your occupation. If you're using part of it for business, you can't have the relief that is for residential occupation. Now, letting relief. This is altered slightly. Now, it's available to cover any gain not covered by the PRR where part of the property is rented out while the remaining part is being occupied by the taxpayer. You must still live there. Now, that rule's been changed because what's been happening is people have been buying a house, not been able to sell it, and gone and bought another house and rented this one out completely and claimed letting relief on the part that's not occupational and not paying any tax on the sale of their second home. So they've changed the rules. You've still got to live there in order to be able to claim it. This is the rule. It's the lower of what you've already claimed and calculated in your PRR or 40,000 or the gain that's attributable to the letting. In other words, the months divided by the total when it was being let out. So it's the lower of those. So let's have a look at example number 12. The last one. Oh, it's the last one in the chapter. Dora Key bought a three-story house on the 1st of November for 160. That's the cost. She occupied the whole of the house until that date, 1st of May, when she let out the top floor and then she sold the house in May 2022. So there she proceeds. Proceeds less cost equals gain. Then you tackle your reliefs. Let's have a look at how that works out. Proceeds less cost equals gain. That's from the question every single time. Now, let's have a look at the exempt and the chargeable months. Okay, again, the dates from the question. The rule that you have applied. And the total months that you have worked out. So, from the 1st of November 2011 until the 30th of April 2017, she was actually in occupation. From the 1st of May 2017 until the 1st of August 21, a third was let and two thirds was occupied. That's the total that's then been split. One third, two thirds. And then the last nine months from the 1st of August 2021 to the 1st of May 2022. So sometimes you do that down and then that back up. So the total of the PRR is 109 because that's the exempt months. So that's your PRR, which needs to come off. Ooh, slightly different figure there. Oh, 
Okay. We may have to alter that. Do the maths. Okay, I'll let you do that. Do the maths. There is an error. One of them is correct. <laughs> now, the relief for letting is the lower of that figure or 40,000 or the 17 months times the gain, which is 35. So whatever is the lowest, 35,079. Now, we only need, according to this, 29,649 because the rest of it. So you only need what you need to reduce the gain down to nil. Okay, you only need what you need. So we've come to the end of this chapter on reliefs. We've come to the end of the section about capital gains tax. There is one more chapter for you to um, review and that talks about exam technique and a brief recap of the most important areas. So watch that, take note of that before you get to move on to corporation tax.